Happy Monday everyone, this is Martha with Nature Niche and this week we're going to show you uh, an adventure uh, my friend Rita and I had in uh, rearing giant leopard moth eggs. So she found this uh, out in the woods. This is the female. She is gorgeous and she has been very busy laying lots of eggs. So we're gonna leave some on the dead tree and take some with us and try our hand at rearing giant leopard moths. This story is about a year in the making. We found this female leopard moth um, in uh, mid to late June of 2021, but I thought sharing the story with you would be um, apt for uh, this week since it is National Moth Week. The giant leopard moth is our largest eastern tiger moth, um, and it inhabits forests and woodlands uh, from extreme southern Canada, west to Minnesota, and south to Florida and Texas. The um, moth only has one brood in the north and in New England um, and nearly mature caterpillars um, overwinter. They tend to accumulate glycerol um, to help with their tolerance of freezing um, during diapause and then they're active through the next spring. Um, and then it has two or more broods in the south with caterpillars around nearly um, the entire year. So it is a nocturnal moth. The males uh, can be common around lights uh, turned on at night, but the females are, are less attracted to light. So you're, you're less likely to find the females. Um, Rita has a good eye and spotted this one on a woodland walk. The caterpillars are also nocturnal, uh, for the most part, and they tend to um, hunker down during the day in the leaf litter, under bark, um, and then climb into trees and shrubs um, at night to feed. Um, they, and they also hang out under um, like leaves and wood piles. People tend to stumble upon them um, mostly in the, the spring and fall, um, and you might see them crossing the roads um, in the fall trying to find places to overwinter. As far as identification goes, the adults have a relatively large wingspan. Females are smaller than males, ranging um, between uh, two and a quarter inches for females up to 3.6 inches wide for males. And as you can see, they are beautifully patterned with a white background and hollow black spots, um, sometimes also with iridescent blue spots on the thorax. Um, and they have hollow or solid black spots on the forewing, especially along that leading edge of the wing. As they age, the scales tend to wear away, uh, making the margin of the wing very translucent. The abdomen, um, so the part that's hidden when, um, by the wings when they're at rest, is usually blue-black um, iridescent in color with orange areas beneath. And the legs also are iridescent, uh, blue, black, in color. The eggs are spherical, about 0.8 millimeters in diameter, and a beautiful pearly gray color. They're laid in multiple clusters on um, or near a variety of host plants. And so um, having never reared this species before, we, we took a conservative approach and gathered um, some of the eggs but left some of the patches out on the, the dead tree limb where they were found um, and left the female um, out there. We did divide the eggs up, um, gave some to a couple of um, friends and acquaintances who have much more experience um, rearing butterflies and moths. They wanted to try as well. So they're the eggs that we um, donated and then we put part of the branch in a butterfly habitat in my store. 
And you can see within a couple of weeks, we had teeny tiny little instars um, hatching out of the egg mass. Um, the larvae of the species are variable. Uh, the early instars are covered um, in um, stiff black hairs called setae, and um, they have orange abdominal segments intermixed with dark brown ones, giving them um, a, a banded appearance. And it's really hard when they're teeny tiny. I don't know if you can see that little larvae crawling on that uh, woodland sunflower leaf, but you can see the little patches where they've eaten the flesh off of the leaves. And you can see that banding, and that banding is pretty apparent um, through the middle instar um, stages of this species. And here they are a little bit older. That banding is a little bit easier to see. Um, and those, those black hairs, but they are happily eating um, on some cherry here inside the store. And here they are um, next to an oak branch. And now we're getting into the, the middle instars. That banding is really apparent, the orange and dark brown. Um, we realized that they would eat oak, but what they really liked um, was different kinds of cherry species and violets. It seemed to get devoured the most. So we tried to feed them a variety um, in, the, in the habitat and uh, keep them fed. There were at one point over 90 um, caterpillars that hatched from the eggs. So that was a lot of mouths to feed for sure. The um, late instar are fully grown um, caterpillars uh, and they're known as giant woolly bears. So there's another common name for this species referring to um, the caterpillar. Um, they can get about three inches long and overall um, they're black with uh, red or orange spherules or spots along their side. And they have these um, red intersegmental bands and those are readily visible when the caterpillars um, curl up into um, a defensive ball um, when disturbed. So they were in that position a lot as we were cleaning out the habitats um, and switching them in between um, those and, and changing out their, their food. They are covered in uh, shiny black bristles. And you can see there, there's a shed skin next to um, one of the later instar caterpillars. And uh, the bristly um, hairs are arise from raised warts. There's a shed skin, so it looks very much like um, a caterpillar uh, and um, these species don't sting um, or and they're less likely to cause skin reaction um, in folks who um, are sensitive to the the hairy caterpillars so here they are moving around uh, in the habitat at the front of my store I don't have an example of um, a cocoon to show you. They never made it to that point. Um, but the cocoon and the pupae of this species um, is also black with uh, reddish brown spiracles. And um, it's enclosed in a yellow net-like cocoon with small amber beads where the threads intersect. As far as host plants go, Giant leopard moth and giant woolly bear caterpillars in particular are um, broadly polyphagous. So that means they eat many different species of plants. For a review of the details um, about insect host plants and that relationship, check out Mondays with Martha number 67. Um, this species consumes an array of forbs or wildflowers and woody plants, um, trees and shrubs. 
and they include uh, cherry, dandelion, oak, plantain, cabbage, sunflower, violets, willows, maples, as well as um, bananas, orange and lemon trees, avocado, uh, further south. And as I was uh, preparing this post, I saw that they will also eat black locust and tartarian honeysuckle. So I am kicking myself for not finding some invasive species to uh, have them devour as well. Um, in general, tiger moths, of which this species is in that group, um, they feed briefly on a plant and then they'll move to a different species of plant. So this food mixing behavior um, increases the likelihood of them eating plants with toxic chemicals uh, so that the caterpillars can sequester those chemicals for their own defense. Um, and the caterpillars curl into um, a ball um, and that shows off those red warning intersegmental bands which um, tell predators that they are unpalatable. The spines also push outward, making it very hard to grasp these particular caterpillars. Um, the adults, if handled, may feign death and roll over and curl up their abdomen, um, exposing bright colors. And they may also exude um, a yellow acrid fluid to deter predators that has a very bitter taste. The adults black and white coloration will help protect them via disruptive coloration so it makes them um, hard for birds to see. They may be eaten by nocturnally active birds like whippoorwills or chuckwills widows um, as well as bats and um, they have ears behind where their wings join their body and that helps them detect the echolocation um, of the bats. Other species of tiger moths also have uh, thoracic organs that produce high frequency clicks in response to bat sonar and may jam their echolocation. So um, it's not really known if giant leopard moth um, produces these sounds, the adult moths are not. Um, but similar species do. So there are some of the, the defense mechanisms against predators. Um, the caterpillars are frequently parasitized by tachinid flies and um, ichnormonid wasps, which can make them um, difficult to rear. I saw no signs of parasitism and um, honestly are, are in the end 80 plus um, caterpillars uh, stayed in screened habitats their entire lives. So uh, they were well fed on a variety of their, their host plants and they stayed active really late into the fall. Um, I finally tucked them away in early November in my unheated garage and uh, I kept the oak leaf litter moist, uh, but basically we ran out of food source. The oak leaves started falling um, and finally they, they settled down and I sprayed them um, fairly frequently over the winter. That leaf litter tried to keep it moist, but this spring when we pulled them out of the habitat, um, they weren't alive. They were all dried out, unfortunately. We were really sad about it. We had spent a lot of time uh, rearing these guys and uh, I suppose big lesson learned here is that it can be very difficult to overwinter these large bodied hairy caterpillars and uh, a lot of times nature does it best and it's hard to create the right artificial condition so I wished I had released more of them um, at the end of 2021 uh, before overwintering them um, but lesson learned for next time if I were to try this again I'd probably release quite a few of them and just try to overwinter a few and see if we could get that right. This story does have a um, little bit of a happy ending though I was getting ready for my um, June plant sale and I found on one of our pallets at our store 
this um, adult leopard moth. So I think one of the caterpillars probably escaped while we were um, cleaning and switching habitats and refreshing food one week and um, managed to hang out, um, go through its different instars and survive in the landscape. So not all was lost. I was happy to um, see this one and uh, walked it back to the woods behind the store and um, hope to have more leopard moths in my landscape in the future. I hope you enjoyed this moth story. Have a great National Moth Week. Take care.